Reasons and consequences look beyond your computer screen. Take a moment to step away from your computer, grab a notebook, step outside, and ask 100 passers-by which country manufactures the best automobiles. I'm confident that about 60% will mention Germany, 30% will say Japan, and the remaining votes will be split among South Korea, the USA, and perhaps France. This perception has been entrenched for decades and persists in the collective consciousness, potentially leading to one of the largest economic crises crises in history. This belief isn't limited to everyday people, but extends to businessmen, bankers, and even state leaders. Meanwhile, for several years now, China has been producing the world's finest automobiles, a reality not everyone acknowledges, which could spell disaster for entire nations. Why and how? Let's dive into the details over the next few minutes. Let's delve into specifics to substantiate our claims, starting with statistics. According to Forbes, as of December 31st, 2019, Japan was the world's leading car exporter, closely followed by Germany, with the USA in a slightly more distant third place, South Korea next, and China at the bottom of the list with negligible figures. Yet the perception of cheap, unreliable Chinese cars has changed drastically over three years. By January 10th, 2024, Forbes recognized China as the leading global car exporter for the first time in history, surpassing longtime leaders Japan and Germany. Moreover, China has also become the number one country in car manufacturing globally. The real intrigue lies in the specifics, especially around electric vehicles, EVs, towards which the world is increasingly leaning. Whether this shift is beneficial or detrimental is a topic for another discussion, but it signifies that the next two decades will likely be dominated by a transition to electric cars. Here, China's automotive landscape has undergone even more significant changes. Tesla, once the unchallenged leader of the electric revolution saw its position overtaken. In the last quarter of 2023, Elon Musk's company sold 484,000 vehicles, setting a new company record by increasing its total sales by 38%. However, this milestone was surpassed by Chinese company BYD, which sold 40,000 more electric vehicles in the same period, relegating the longtime market leader to second place with little hope of reclaiming the top spot. BYD sold 3 million cars in total for the year while Tesla 1.840,000. And the thing is, that comparison is only for BYD and Tesla. Moreover, BYD is not the only successful electric vehicle manufacturing company in China. Comparing BYD not with Elon Musk's behemoth, but with someone like Volkswagen would be humiliating because the German veteran sold only 200,000 electric vehicles in the last quarter of 2023, twice less than the Chinese leader. It gets even sadder when comparing the overall automotive industry of the state. In the top 10 global electric vehicle sales, the first two spots are taken by the USA with Tesla, immediately followed by seven Chinese brands, and Germany with its ID4 is near the bottom of the sales list. Sad, but that is the reality. And if we step away from electric vehicles, the sales statistics for conventional cars won't differ much. In classic gasoline cars, China is also the number one manufacturer on the planet. Well, God bless. More doesn't mean better, right? China has always been famous for its ability to churn out tons of consumer goods. Let's see what the statistics say about the quality of Chinese cars. Let's start, for example, with Euro NCAP, the organization that is the most respected provider of crash test results in the world, located in Belgium, and you can't call its results fabricated. Meanwhile, according to them, the safest car for drivers in 2023 is the Chinese Neo ET5, followed by the Volkswagen ID.7 for fairness. However, the next five lines are also occupied by Chinese brands besides Neo. European crash tests include cars like the Wei BYD Xpeng in the list of the safest cars on the planet. So we've sorted that out, and then it gets even funnier. The aforementioned Volkswagen ID.4 with a range of 280 miles on one charge features an interior of unforgettable creaky plastic and an 8-inch screen for fans of the 2000s, with accordingly also a performance from the 2000s. This pleasure costs $45,000 dollars in the minimum configuration. In China, for $35,000, they offer BYD Song L in the maximum configuration, which goes 370 miles on one charge, is lined with faux leather inside, and carries a projector, a modern Tesla-level tablet, and incomparable material quality. Here we come to the main question that threatens everything. Why the hell is everything so cheap? For nearly any Western car, China has not just an equivalent, but an improved version, and it's cheaper, too. For the Mercedes-Benz G 
GLS at $120,000, China has the LAN L9 and ITO M9 for the Audi Eon at $72,000. China responds with A11 for $50,000. And everywhere, it's the same situation. The Chinese version has a better battery, better screen, better engine, and more features in the cabin. It's gone so far that on January 16, 2024, the European Commission sent investigators to China to find out why the hell the Celestials make everything the same but cheaper. The reason for concern is on the surface. China wants to sell all this good stuff in Europe, where a buyer, given a choice, will definitely choose the cheaper and more technologically advanced option. What will happen in such a case is quite clear. Huge problems for Volkswagen, Mercedes, Renault, and all European manufacturers with subsequent bankruptcies, closures and factories, and de-industrialization. Nearly one in ten adults in Germany works in the automotive industry or services it. In the Czech Republic and other smaller countries, the figures are even bigger because there are German productions. What to do with such a mountain of unemployed is absolutely unclear, hence the investigation. European investigators suspect that all this is subsidized by the Chinese authorities, and China sells cars at almost a loss just to bankrupt competitors, take over their niche, and dictate their terms. The tactic for the market is not new, and Audi, Volkswagen, and Mercedes have used it themselves many times during their long careers, and they are still using it now. Thomas Schaefer, CEO of Volkswagen, at the Board of Directors meeting on November 27, 2023, openly stated that their cars are unprofitable and have to be sold at a loss just to stay afloat. But even this, as we have already seen, is not enough to compete with the Chinese. According to various estimates, the automotive industry gives Germany from 5 to 16 percent of GDP. In any case, this figure can be multiplied by at least two because there are also a bunch of lawyers, insurance agents, and just gas station attendants who are inseparably connected with the sphere but do not go into statistics. France and Italy are in a slightly better situation. However, it will not be easy for anyone, and a lot depends on the investigation of the European Commission. Although some experts claim that its result is predictable because there are actually no secrets in the cheapness of Chinese cars. The closest pursuer, the USA, in the production of batteries for electric vehicles, China surpasses by three times. And there, batteries for a significant part of the Tesla Model 3 Elon Musk buys from the Chinese KTL, which occupies almost 40% of the global battery market and again is just one of several large Chinese corporations. Volkswagen only started building the first battery factory in 2023, which actually makes no sense because China's share in the global production of polysilicon is 94% and in graphite 70%. All this is needed to create a good battery. That is, even if you want to make them yourself, materials will still have to be taken in China. About screens, processors, and other equipment you have probably heard, and it turns out a funny situation because it is no longer Apple that has factories in China but produces everything there according to its own drawings. Now in the world of automaking, everything is the opposite. It is China, with its resources, blueprints, and engineers that produces critically important elements of cars and electric vehicles. To say that a screen or a battery at Volkswagen could be better than at a conditional Chinese brand, because both buy a battery from a Chinese manufacturer, who will obviously make the price for the Chinese lower than for a foreigner, is the same with engines, cabin trim, and so on. Do you know where W.F. Gang, the legendary designer who gave Audi its recognizable look, is now working? He's at BYD. Do you know where the engineers from Jaguar and Land Rover are now? They're at Neo. Juan Ma Lopez, a former Ferrari interior designer, is now also at BYD. The list can go on forever. But to put it briefly, over the last 5-10 years, the Chinese have managed to lure away a third of the world's engineering talent, announcing the hiring of 3,000 Chinese engineers for plant design, simply because all the talent is already there and has managed to train a new generation of talents. The world has literally turned upside down in a few years, right before our eyes. Because as we said at the beginning of the video, businessmen, shareholders, and bankers still believe in the stereotype of the global automotive industry, and the reality has almost nothing in common with it anymore. People do not come to China for labor and resources, they come for technology and engineers, even from Tesla. The hierarchy in the world of automaking has changed, and how it reacts to it, the still mighty butt every day becoming obsolete, will affect the lives of millions. Until next time, friends.